We have our milk carton here. <laughs> have you ever burned toast? You know, you can smell that for a long time. Now imagine there's somebody who doesn't know what toast is. They don't know what toast smells like, and they don't know what a toaster is. And uh, in every other way, they are just like you and me. In fact, they're, they're, they're pretty keen. But just for some reason, they, they manage to get through life without those few bits of knowledge. Now let's say you burn toast in your house badly, and you eat the piece of toast anyway, and you throw away the toaster. And you bring that person in and you say, find the source of that smell. <laughs> there is absolutely no chance that person is going to have any idea. Now what's interesting is, what I'm suggesting here for an off cycle or an extinct current is not all that far off from a principle that dominates standard cosmology, the Big Bang. We are trying to explain something with something that we, it's not around today. It's the toaster we threw out of the window and said, okay, you can come in now. And so this isn't exactly a foreign concept to our understanding of trying to backtrack through cosmology. But let's come back to this for just a moment because it is uh, a very critical study. And for those who are website members and caught the deeper look phone conversation with a couple of the co-authors of the paper, and they, they explained that this was not just something that would work at Enceladus, that the dust can do this anywhere. Uh, anywhere there is a significant amount of dust concentrated around a filament, or if there is too much dust between the detector and whatever it is you're trying to get, it will at least affect the readings that you were getting, and they, they were both um, uh, somewhat concerned and somewhat excited over uh, some of the implications this had had for uh, studies of deep space that went back decades. And so we come to something that you can see almost every day, Cornell's archive updates, and that is tracing cosmic filaments, studies of cosmic filaments, dust, studies of the baryons or the stars or the galaxies, in these cosmic filaments, sometimes they're actually just galactic filaments and they're, they're star-forming regions within you know, galactic dust clouds and things like that. And what's interesting is, in this particular one, it, it basically is about the temperature and density of the material and green, uh, baryonic material and green. And if there had been current flowing, or even something as simple as an arc discharge, which quickly developed hydrostatic equilibrium, you would run into a situation uh, where you could have what we see today without any evidence of its maker being there today. Now here's something everybody needs to know. There is no such thing as lightning in space. It does not exist. This is an image from uh, the Yelverton Plasma Laboratory, uh, our, our buddies down in Georgia. And it was an arcing bolt of lightning, if you'll remember from the video. And then he pulled the vacuum, and it immediately turned to this. Now, what's interesting is this is indeed glow-mode plasma because it has enough energy, but that's not really what we'd be looking for in space because he turned the voltage down. And there was still a flow of current it was just a reduced current, but it was no longer glowing. All the, all the meters were still picking it up. You know, physically, nothing has happened except he turned the voltage down halfway. It doesn't have to glow. It doesn't have to be a blue arc of lightning for there to actually be current there. It can be uh, in dark mode. And there is some great work by uh, Anthony Peratt, uh, Los Alamos National Lab, and others on, on space plasma, and uh, not to mention Al Fain himself, uh, in the classic work, Cosmic Plasma. We're going to watch a video, and it is indeed going to play uh, a few clips over and over again. These are uh, also from our, our plasma lab down in Georgia, except uh, no vacuum this time. Uh, so these uh, you should recognize as the water with pyronine added just for visual effect, and then, of course, the water uh, discharge with electricity. And what's interesting is how, uh, how well the matter is traced, uh, tracing the lines of current and uh, how well it is attracted to the current 
wants to hug it and uh, how it is left in place. You know, when you turn the current off, the water does not go back to where it was. And water is a polar molecule. It is one of the easiest ways to show this. But indeed, uh, this works for uh, this works for charged particles as well, and it works for dust. That is how a Swiffer works, by the way. Um, it, it, it's the same basic principle. Dust is going to be attracted to current, and the moment you have enough dust attracted to current, how well can you detect that current? You can't. That's what we just learned at Enceladus. They do know that there is a feeding of material to the pearls on the string, the galaxies on the filament. And if that is the case, and if it is baryonic, then it is baryonic matter in motion. It is baryonic matter in a current feeding the galaxies. The science is very, very certain that these galaxies are also being fed along the filament by this material. The only thing they can find there tracing them is the baryons. If it's baryons moving, there can be currents, there can be excess magnetic fields. The dust that will be attracted to it, the, the, the gases that will be attracted to it and all around it will obscure and hide the true nature of what's happening at the center of them. Trust me, if it can work in situ at Enceladus, it can work from here on Earth looking deep into the cosmos.